we're on. Dylan Ladd, what's going on? Thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks, Jack. No worries. I might look a bit tired here because I've just woken up, so just let everyone know. <laughs> I was going to say extra thanks because I know you're waking up early out in Bali, and that ties directly into the first question I wanted to ask you. So how the hell did you end up in Bali? I know you've only been writing on Twitter for not even a year. So how did you end up leaving your job, going to Bali, linking up with all these dudes? Yeah, it's been pretty crazy. I think I started posting on X in, well, Twitter at the time in February, February the 1st, I think I started. And obviously I was in Dakota's cohort with you. Um, so yeah, pretty much just started learning ghostwriting back then. And kind of like the first month went a bit slow. And then like the last day I went up to like a thousand followers and then another month, another thousand followers, then another month, another thousand followers. And then I started landing my first client. And then I think in the space of a month, I landed like five clients and I was just like, holy shit. And so it all just went douche like, like that. And it got to a point where it became a bad idea just to stay in my nine to five. And then I obviously linked up with Glenn and Tatsuki launched Growth Army. And then we were just like, holy shit, we're doing this alongside nine to five. This is stupid. Uh, so then I handed in my notice and that was in, I think June, July time, June. So that was like five months after joining X. So it was all a bit crazy. And then, yeah, this month we just launched, well, no, end of October, we launched Growth Army 2 and Virgil and Tats were like, you got to come out to Bali. And we were like, ha ha ha, like as a joke. And they were like, no, you sh actually should like just buy a ticket and come here. And this was like the week before. So I was like, oh God. So I brought it up to my girlfriend. She was like, yeah, you should do it. So I've actually come out here for, I've been out here for a month and then I'm going to Sri Lanka for a month next, well, in two days. And I've actually, I'm actually the best man in the wedding. So I need to write a best man speech for that as well. Um, so it's all a bit crazy. And then back to the UK on the 28th of November. So which is in like 20 days. And then I'm going to hibernate and just do a load of work in the cold Welsh weather. That's awesome. And it's just wild to me, like how fast this creator game can move. I mean, when I started about a year ago, I had no idea where it was going to take me. But like five months later, I end up dropping out of college, something I never thought I would do and like moving across the world. And it's just yeah. wild the things that can happen when you start posting online or you join a cohort. Like when we were in Dakota's cohort, I just spent my entire life savings to go in on that cohort. And I didn't know what it was going to yeah. bring me. But that fuck it decision and that fuck it mentality to just like mm. go across the world, go to Bali. I think it's what it takes. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And it seems like a trend. Like everyone I speak to that's done really well seems to have that like fuck it mentality and are willing to like invest in themselves. Cause I know like Dakota did the same who's like taught us. So he spent like most of his life savings on a course back then. And it's just like, it seems to be a trend and yeah people who try and like hoard hoard money and just hold on to it and don't invest in themselves they tend to get left behind they're the ones that usually like hold on to their ideas as well and don't look for new ideas or like share their ideas i, I don't know i think it's a trend yeah yeah you almost need like that radical open-mindedness and a high tolerance for risk but for me mm. like i never had those things but i kind of built them over time and i realized like the risk tolerance argument I think you can just reframe your idea of risk because for me, it was like, all right, I'm a college student with like $5,000 in my bank account. If this doesn't work out, I'm exactly where I would be anyways. And worst case yeah. scenario, I just finished college or worst case scenario, I can just go back and live with the parents and get a normal job. So I think people aren't necessarily afraid of failure, but they're afraid of losing that comfortable identity or losing their comfortable beliefs. Um, but you yeah. guys have just absolutely gone so fast. It's wild. Yeah, I think that's so true. Because like, think about it, um, I was thinking when I was quitting my nine to five, like, what's the worst case scenario? I was like, right, I've built this brand now. Like, people know me. I've got a bit of a network. Worst case, this like, I don't make one dollar, and then I just find another marketing job. Like, it's not that hard. And then the best case, like, oh yeah, I could actually do quite well. Come to Bali for a fucking month, but. Again, like with the with the risk stuff as well, it's I think people are more worried about getting like an ego hit and people judging them than actually the risk of failure. 
it's just like the risk of the unknown. Like some people just want, I don't know, a boring accounting job. Like that's not for me, but for me, I like taking risks. I was a trader previously and like I learned a lot of stuff from that. So like risk management, but it's more like taking educated bets, which I quite like doing as well. Um, and this just seemed like a, a really good bet to do. Seemed to be, I don't know, I was seeing what was going on on the timeline and I was seeing like, I think your pinned tweet was like, oh, I've moved to Argentina and stuff. And I was like, holy shit, this is possible. So like even that like bit of hope kind of like gets you going. For sure. Yeah. You see one person do it and you're like, why not me? That's been like, that's been my number one mentality for so long in this creator game. Like when you, when you get into it, you put people on pedestals, but then once you get to know mm. them, you realize they're just normal people like you that have been in the game longer and you can take a lot of inspiration. But I wanted to segue yeah. a little bit to, uh, to growth army. So February, you joined Dakota's cohort, you plan on being a ghostwriter. How did the transition from doing that to launching growth army happen? And how did you meet Glenn and Tatsuki? So I was like my previous job was I was head of marketing for a purpose driven denim company. So they made like denim jeans, like high end salvage um, sourced from like Japan and stuff. And my boss was a copywriter for 37 years. He built like three successful companies and stuff. So I had a really good marketing background from him because he was, I had like direct contact with him. I could ask him any questions I want, all this good stuff. So I fell in love with that sort of like marketing brand strategy sort of side of things. And I was like, okay, well, personal brand is kind of like a business brand, but like you just got to brand yourself compared to like a company sort of thing. So I was like, that's interesting. And then Tatsuki actually joined the company I think like a year year ago or something. So like I took him under my wing and I trained him up. But he worked for a partner company which was like online courses and stuff like that. So he started learning marketing as well. And I was like, oh, do you want to start a marketing agency? And he was like, uh, it sounds a bit silly, but yeah, whatever. And then it turned out I was like, oh no, actually let's do this Twitter thing instead. So we both started at the same time. And like you were saying earlier, like having a network, having people around you in the community, I think because we were both doing it together, we were just going faster than everyone else because we were sharing our ideas and stuff like that. So yeah, Tatsuki actually lives 10 minutes away from me back in back in Wales. Uh, he's a lot That's younger awesome. than me. I think he's like 23. So he's probably similar to you. I'm 29. And then, yeah, we met Glenn on X then. And he was do he was like, he'd done a lot of blog writing and stuff like that built a lot of like little stuff right in but he was getting paid like on fiverr like pennies to the word you know like not much money and then he started at the same time as us and we came across him we were like holy shit this guy's engagement is like he's getting more engagement than like 100k accounts and he's only got like three four k um so we got talking and then he was like do you know what there's a gap in the market between like really expensive cohorts and then like low ticket courses and we were like right we can help people here because those people like in the middle bracket they we can teach them how to build a brand how to sort of write good content how to network with people how to build an offer how to get clients stuff like that so like we know all this stuff has helped us get to like 10k a month like we can get people to like 1k a month surely so we launched the co-op and then yeah it went really well so got 60 people in had to close a day early and we were just like holy shit like we don't really know what we're doing so we hired like a community manager got the cur curriculum together and ended up going amazing got some amazing results and yeah this this time around we productized it a lot more and like made it more systematic so the course is actually pre-recorded so people can go through it at their own pace and stuff like that um so yeah it's really interesting that's pretty much how it came about yeah, one thing I admire about you guys from the outside is your speed of execution. It's just insane. Like most people yeah. have the idea, but then they wait months and months and months. And I've fallen victim to this too. But now that I'm starting to be in communication with a lot of like the bigger creators or the bigger entrepreneurs on X, the one thing that I notice that separates them from everybody else is their speed. They just act yeah. Despite not knowing what to do. And that's the stage I'm currently in right now. I'm like in the early stages of about to launch my first cohort. And I feel exactly like you did. I have no idea what I'm doing. 
but I'm figuring mm. it out as I go. And I think that's the only thing you can really do. And if I'm correct, I heard that you guys didn't have any of your cohort built out before you actually launched it. So like, what was that like? Was it ex- insanely hectic? Yeah. So yeah, but there was three of us. So it made it a lot easier, but we were like, look, if we just pick a day, we have to do it. And like, we'll get the work done. Cause we knew we like, we believed in ourselves, but if we would never have set a day, we would have been like, Oh, we'll just delay it a month, delay it a month, whatever. But like you were saying, like it's, you got to move fast and like, you don't have to be the first, but as long as you're one of the first to like catch on to a new trend or something like that, you will get a lot of the reward from it. And then obviously a new trend will come around and then you get to try and jump onto that. So it's being quick, it's being adaptable. And yeah, I think that's one of the biggest traits you see in like the successful creators as well. How do you cultivate that bias for action? What do you mean? Like, like, so something that I noticed that I need to improve at is shortening the gap between idea and execution, just taking rapid action. So how could somebody shorten that gap or increase their action capacity or action threshold? I think just setting a deadline for your tasks is a huge thing because I've had people in the cohort that have been working on their offer for like weeks. And I'm just like, when I started out, all I had was like, a copy and paste of like a bunch of bullet points that I would send people in the DMs. I'm like, the, the offer doesn't have to be perfect. I feel like you're just procrastinating, not wanting to get people on calls. Just start sending something to people. And then they do that and they start getting clients and like getting on sales calls and stuff. So I think you can do a lot of work in much less time if you set a deadline. So that's a massive thing for me. I'm like, right, I'm getting this done by the end of the day or by the end of next week. If I don't, I'm not bloody, I'm not doing anything. And what another thing I've started doing is if I don't do a certain task that I want to do, I'll send Tatsuki like a hundred dollars until I do that. I'll be like, look, if I don't do this by next week, like you get to keep the money. And then it like incentivizes me to do it. It's a bit of a weird That's thing, awesome. but it really, really works. Yeah. Really. No, works. I, th- I think those weird things are necessary. Like putting that stress on yourself, putting that pressure on yourself. So you have to take action. Like I did it yesterday, actually. Uh, it's November 7th today. Yesterday, Monday, November 6th, I put out a screenshot yeah. and I said, next Monday, I'm releasing my free video course. Mm. And people were like, oh, yeah. let's go. Like, I'm so excited to see it. And I'm like, shit, like, <laughs> I got to take massive action now. So I was up yeah. late last night building it. I was building it before we hopped on this podcast. And I'm usually somebody that is very firm on like, I only want to work three to four hours a day. I want to have a balanced life. But I think yeah. in certain seasons of life, like you have to adapt and you have to flow yeah. with that busyness. So for you right now, like you guys just launched your second cohort. So would you say you're in a busy building season or is it a little bit more relaxed? Yeah. So yeah, well, I've just built um, the infinite creator course as well. So I've been more like, like we did the sales push for growth army, which is really sort of like draining. Cause it's just, you're up all night and like stuff goes wrong and you have to be like hyper aware of everything. And then it kind of took a week off just to sort of like relax, chilled out with the guys in growth army, like getting to know them and stuff like that. And now this last week I've been building uh infinite creator course, which is like an ideation course. Um, so there's a lot of different things. And I quite like that because I've never been in a job for more than like a year and a half. I'll get a, get a new job, massive learning curve. Then you sort of like plateau, right? And then I just get bored and want something new like to to learn. So I would always just jump from job to job. And now that I'm actually in a job where there's always something new, X is moving so quick, like different platforms, all this stuff. There's so much opportunity and it's just keeping me busy, keeping my mind busy. And um, yeah. Yeah, it's like that. But like you were saying, I like to work in sprints. I'll have periods where I'll just do the bare minimum. So like write content for the week, engage, stuff like that. And then I wouldn't do anything else just to sort of like recharge. But other times I'll be up like, I'll be working like 12 hour days and I don't really care as long as the output, like I'll get some something from it. It's not like working a nine to five where you're sort of like a fixed income you do more work and you don't get any more reward from it. It's like, I'll, I'll work weekends now if I have to, just because I enjoy it. If it's like two hours in the morning on, on a Saturday, I'll do it. 
Yeah, I'm the same way. And honestly, on a Saturday, there's nothing more I would rather do than like sit down and write or sit down and work because the work is so fulfilling. And that's why like entrepreneurship for me, now that I've been in this game for a little bit, like there's no way I could go back just because of the autonomy you have, you know, your success is directly predicated on yeah. your work. And yeah, it's more pressure, but it's extremely more rewarding. Um, and I wanted, I actually had written yeah. down to ask you a little bit about the infinite creator course. I was checking it out. So can you give me like a high level overview? And then I'm curious to know personally for you, your idea generation process, because you come up with the most clever ideas on the timeline. I think that's probably from your marketing background too. But the one that comes to mind is yeah. like the picture of you like riding on a croc, like in the ocean. I was like, <laughs> how, did, how did this guy think of this? Yeah, no, that picture actually someone <laughs> someone memed me, some guy called Dom on on X. He just started making memes of all of us and like he made that one. And I was like, okay, that's quite funny. Like that's eye catching. So yeah, I did the thread of like how I quit my nine to five. And I was like, do you know what? Like everyone's just posting stuff like this now and like it's not as fun. So I was like, I'm just gonna put a croc boat picture <laughs> in it. But no, I think yeah, from my marketing role, like my boss always he was like obviously a copywriter and I was like, oh, he's going to teach me all of these writing tips and like how to write and stuff. And the whole time was just spent finding good ideas. And he was like, it doesn't matter how good your writing is. Like if the idea is good, then you can write about it. And there's so many like writing courses out there and stuff like that. And people tell you to write three long forms a week, write a newsletter every week, write three tweets a day and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, that's all good and yeah, well, but if they haven't got any ideas to write about, then they're going to really struggle. So yeah, it's just pretty much sharing all of my different sources of finding ideas from like Reddit to just day-to-day -day life, how to look for them in conversation, podcasts, everything like that. And then different strategies from like thought leaders that I really look up to. Um, so yeah, it's really good. It's really action-packed, but I keep the videos really short because if I'm doing a course, I don't want the videos to be longer than like two, three minutes. I want people to be able to go in and just like, ooh, what's that? Like click on it, watch it on their phone or whatever, get on with their day, try it out. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the plan with that. And yeah, it's got some really good feedback so far. So I'm just gonna keep adding stuff that I learn in there as well. So it's kind of like an ongoing thing. Um, that's but awesome. yeah, like, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just amazed by like cre creativity and like really weird thinking and, out of the box thinking. So yeah, just trying to teach people how to do that. And hopefully the timeline will benefit from it and people will start posting some interesting stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. I think you have to be down in those niche rabbit holes of whether it's like an esoteric book or whether it's like this yeah. subreddit where you're super deep down this random subreddit, like that's where you find the gold, but most people aren't willing to go down that rabbit hole. Yeah. So has that been something you've always been naturally drawn towards, or is it something you've kind of trained yourself to do over the years? Not naturally. I'll go like, I'll go down like a random YouTube rabbit hole or like a Reddit rabbit hole. I've been doing it since I was like 16, probably. I was just like fascinated. Um, Cause it, um, it's weird. I'm quite, stoic but I'm quite like impulsive and like emotional as well like a romantic so I, I don't know like I've got both aspects yeah. so it's quite it's like a weird combination but it's good like the creativity side from the the more like emotional and like impulsive I love theater and stuff like that so I could go on reddit and the good thing about reddit is people tend to be anonymous so they actually share their true feelings so if I go on like a copywriting subreddit or something i'll know the people that share the problems and they're really passionate about it and they they actually share stuff that they would probably wouldn't share in person if that makes sense so that's a really good benefit of um of reddit yeah that's interesting i know a lot of other creators who are really good with ideation and coming up with really cool ideas they're really deep into reddit like i lived with a friend matt mm. mick in costa rica and argentina for oh, a yeah. while and watching his like creativity and curiosity to go down rabbit holes like it was pretty wild to see i've never done that on reddit i've done it more in like books and podcasts but i've never got into reddit um but do you have any other like weird esoteric uh ways to come up with creative ideas or like little hacks you use to get more creative? I've, I've got a funny one because everyone shits on like youtube shorts and reels and tiktoks and stuff like that 
And I'm like, okay, you might hate them, but there's a reason they're as addictive as crack because everyone just gets so, so I'm like, if you're actually like, if you do watch them, at least watch them and think like, what's the emotion this is sparking? Like, what's the idea? Why am I so hooked to this? Like, and a lot of the time you get really good ideas from it. Um, so that's like an outside of the box one. Um, Cause I think um, one of my students, Lewis, he saw a Joe Rogan short, turned it into a tweet and it got like 200 likes. And I was just like, yeah, it just goes to show that you, find, you can find ideas literally anywhere. Like um, WhatsApp conversations, if you're on the call to someone like, just keep thinking like, what does this mean to me? Can, can my reader benefit from this? And you'll just start doing it naturally then. It becomes like subconscious. I love that. And I have a couple ideas based on that. So one, like you have to become a scientist almost when you're like yeah. scrolling instead of just passively consuming, you have to like dissect it. Like what, why did this catch my attention? Why did it yeah. go viral? I really like the idea of using like shorts or Instagram reels for that idea generation because you can get through 10 ideas in a minute you could go super quick yeah. so I, I might actually incorporate that just um, just limit your time so you don't get like yeah, you're not on exactly. the like hour <laughs> that's the hardest you part get, you can get really sucked into that it's i used to be so addicted to tiktok i deleted it forever but now maybe yeah. i can reintroduce it from this more creator lens and something i've written about in the past and maybe i need to go deeper into it but this idea of like the creator consumer spectrum, like most people are on the consumer side where they just passively consume. They don't really think about it. But when you're a creator, yeah. every single part of your life can become an idea for content. Like you're calling up your grandma, like an idea could come yeah. up for content, like literally anything. So when you yeah. were shifting into this online creator space, like was that transition hard for you? Like, or was it natural? Um, so... I was writing for two newsletters for like a year before that, or like a year and a half. So I was always looking for ideas for the newsletters. And one thing our company did um, every Wednesday was creative breakfast. So every Wednesday morning, everyone in the office, like the accountants, like the marketing team, or everyone would have to bring one idea that they found interesting over the last week. It could be like an article, uh, a video, like a song, anything. And what that would do is it would make you start looking for ideas. So like the accountant would like be one of the best, like bringing in the best stuff, right? So they'd be like really involved and like loving it. And it just, it gets you looking at throughout the week. It's like, oh, create breakfast. Like, what am I going to bring? So like you start like researching stuff and writing them down and stuff like that. So I think that's the first time I started actually just keeping like an ideas bank of all of my favorite ideas. That's what I like to call it, ideas bank. And I guess what my boss used to call it was like turning on your ideas radar. So you just start like spotting stuff just throughout the day. That you, Cause like everyone's like, oh, I can't find ideas. But like you have thousands of interactions every day that you can find ideas from. It's just, you gotta start, start looking for them, right? Yeah, I like that term, idea bank, and upping your idea. What, what was the second thing your boss said? Idea. Ideas radar. So like you can idea actually, radar. They're just scanning out for them. Yeah, that'd be a cool thread to write up. Um, that's a really cool idea. It's yeah, sticky. Um, yeah. In terms of like your future, I'm curious because you're clearly a pretty talented writer. You're obviously a really talented marketer. Do you see yourself going more down the writer path or the marketer path? It's tough. I just, yeah, that's tough. I've been thinking that a lot recently. Um, Cause like, I love the online business stuff. I love writing, but my biggest thing is creativity. So whether that, so that kind of ties in more to marketing, I guess, brand strategy, stuff like that. I just love brands that just do outside of the box stuff, like liquid death, stuff like that. Like big thought leaders that just think outside the box. So that's what I'm truly fascinated in. I'm going to start writing a lot more content on that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, we'll see. It might, like, my main focus now is Growth Army. So we're doing all of these different mini courses. We've got Black Ops in the background, which is we're helping people get from 1K to 10K. So we've done the beta launch for that, which went really good. And we're doing stuff very differently. Like in that, we were getting people to like scream at the start of the calls just to like get them to like really it, it sounds crazy but it just lets people open up and just stuff like that I really enjoy because it's a close-knit group everyone's sort of on a team and like you just go out there test stuff learn from each other um 
and even in that, we we had this one week where people weren't hitting goals, and we were like, right, we need to make ourselves accountable. So like we were telling this one guy, like, if you don't land a client by next week, you have to run a half marathon. And he was just like, <laughs> holy shit. Like, yeah. So he was like, oh, holy shit. So we just started setting these like crazy tasks and people actually started like, you should see like the amount of clients that started like coming in then after you just set those little goals, um, which is interesting. But yeah, I, love I think, um, I don't know. I haven't even been on X for a year, so I'm going to leave it till January, see how the next couple of launches go and then see where we go from that. But, but yeah, definitely my content side is going to go much more marketing than I think I, I've fell off the track a bit and I was just doing what everyone else was doing, just like writing generic content. But I want to go back to my core and just write about what I'm passionate about. Cause I think people, I don't think people write what they want to read anymore on, on the timeline. They just write stuff that other people want to read. And if you don't, feel passionate about what you're writing about it comes across and I don't think that's a good thing I 100% agree and I think it's something that anybody could fall into I've definitely fallen into it like where you're yeah. writing for engagement rather for that intrinsic love of it and I notice often yeah. when I write for the intrinsic love of it I sit down at the computer much easier I wake up much easier and I actually get better engagement because I'm being authentic to myself um, yeah, but yeah, I'm excited to see where your brand evolves to because I think it's it's very unique. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I like I don't know. I'm on the crazy side. Like, I like stuff that are just is just a bit random. Like, I put these weird little pictures in my long forms now just because I feel like that's more me and like it makes you stand out a bit as well. Um, but like you were saying, like I can definitely tell from your content when you're passionate about it because you do the, some of these long forms and. I was like, holy shit, these are mad. And like the clarity you get in your writing, I'm just like, okay, this guy knows his stuff about this niche. I appreciate that. Yeah, sometimes like I'll post an extraordinarily long tweet that is like, okay, like maybe nobody would read the whole thing, but it doesn't matter because I did it for me and I did it to clarify my understanding about the topic. The engagement is mm. is a byproduct of that. It doesn't matter as much. Um, yeah. But I I'm think a that's bit, the one I'm on about. Yeah. What, what was it? What was that long form about again? So I had one that went pretty viral. It was called like 23 ideas to compress 90 days of, or two years of personal growth into 90 mm. days. Was it that one? Yeah. Yeah. And my, that, yeah, that was, was like 2000 words. Found, and, the, and the one about you moving home as well. The one about you moving home was really good because like the thing about brevity and like writing, like cutting the fluff, it doesn't mean you have to write short form. It just means the long form doesn't have to have like crap in it. And like, I think that's what you're really good at is you just keep in the actionable stuff, the stuff that really matters. And then you cut the stuff like in between. Yeah. Thank you. That's a, it's a cool observation. And sometimes like you can't even see it in your own writing. Cause for me, it's kind of just intuitive second nature. And I think that yeah. speaks to the power of, for both of us, like starting as ghostwriters, because you get to know the algorithm and you get to know mm. the platform. You get to know what works so well. You create so much specific knowledge. Like I think I've written, I've probably ghost written 500 to a thousand threads. And so it's like, you're just putting in so many yeah. reps to where you go reps, and write yeah. your own stuff. And it's just like flows. It's like second nature. So for anybody out there, who's like starting, just put in the reps, just write a ton. Yeah. You'll get so much better. Yeah. I'm a massive advocate of, quantity over quality in terms of writing especially at the start because you just get so much feedback from the timeline you see what works what doesn't and like you can get a tweet to like 80 percent without any edits or anything like that you can do it pretty quickly um so i just think get it out there get the feedback and then you can always repurpose that content later on and make it a bit better um yeah but that's interesting i think yeah like you said like i, I read a good um tip the other day it was like write as if every word was worth a hundred dollars and i was like oh that's mm. interesting i heard that one before you know you, you really think yeah i love that one i hear it on a podcast i think david Prell podcast and it just really like like light bulb moment i was like oh right that's good yeah that makes sense yeah he's got a great podcast i've been listening to some of his episodes um the one with derek sivers was awesome and he's like the king of that short brief writing with like just straight to the point and i noticed that yeah. your content reflects that a lot too it's always like very short very punchy the one that always comes to mind i think it's maybe one of your most viral ones it's like my friend is working his nine to five like he said he wants to quit six months oh, later yeah. still working the job 
nobody's coming yeah. to save you bro i thought the last word was perfect <laughs> too that was awesome yeah yeah i don't yeah i don't know why that is from being in school i was i we had like a big group of friends we all played rugby we all like fucking bros as you say like yeah. everyone's just like but everyone's just like taking the piss all the time and you you have to like learn to have a bit of a backbone you, you learn how to like be a bit witty and like have one-liners and stuff I think that's where it all like originated from and just start looking for stuff I think joking around and like coming up with really stupid ideas really helps as well like ideation um because I think all of our best ideas especially even for growth army like they all start off as jokes and we were like oh actually this there might be something in that and you have to start thinking stupid to start thinking outside of the box i like that that's a tweet right there that's good that's really good stuff yeah. and yeah i think you do need some of that background where maybe you were like partying or maybe you were like a bro like to build that type of personality because something i see with a lot of people is like they treat the creator game like so professionally and so formally oh, and like yeah you can hear it in their tone but then like now that i'm talking to some bigger creators i just i'm dming them i'm texting them they're just talking like i would talk to my friends in high school like in a group yeah team. it's crazy to see yeah 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 they're, they're the people that are going to get left behind the ones that are just too vanilla not putting any like entertainment up there people are trying to be too educational as well i feel like that's more for like newsletters i think you gotta yeah it's like infotainment i think is the best thing for the timeline now because it's like top of funnel right so people don't really know you that well or if they do they just want like a little snippet of like of like education along with like a, a lot of entertainment because everyone's on social media to get entertained like see a bit of theater they're not just there to like go to class and learn like something yeah. like pretty boring and That's a valuable yeah, it's insight. funny like so many people on the timeline, they're just not like they are on X in real life. They just put this hyper, like emotional side of them on there. And I know people like a lot of like red pill accounts that seem absolutely crazy. Those people are actually really cool in, in person, which is really like weird as well. People are just putting on a persona and that's fine if you want to like grow faster. I think it's, yeah, I encourage it. Everyone likes a bit of like drama and theater. <laughs> yeah, I agree. But it's a little bit of a dangerous game, too, because when you almost oh, project yeah. this like false narrative or false persona, I think you could start to have so much internal self-conflict where you're like, I don't even know who I am. So it's that fine line to border between like yeah. being authentic and then also knowing how to play the game, I guess. Yeah, I think a lot of people as well, like stuff they wouldn't say in real life, but they actually believe it. And then on the timeline, they'll share it if they're like anonymous or whatever. But I feel like with us, because we're like fully ourselves and transparent, posting pictures of ourselves and stuff, like I find it hard to do that to like, like, what's the word? Like, make your persona much bigger than it seems. Yeah. Like I do it sometimes, but like, because I'm always on spaces, podcasts and stuff like that, I'm like, no, I can't really overdo it because people are going to be like, holy shit, this isn't anything like that guy. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I keep it quite natural and just like, I just speak the way I think, like if something is like the way I speak in my head is the way I, I write. So hopefully it's like pretty on point, but yeah, it's like some of the people out there are crazy. Like you speak to them and, or like you jump on a call with someone and you're just like, holy shit, this is that guy. Like I would never have thought that. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it's like Dakota. Dakota is exactly like he is on the timeline, in person, like on the foot, on the calls and stuff. Yeah, I think if you're playing the game for the long game, it's best to be authentic, yeah. or else it's gonna catch up to you. But like, I really believe now that we have these personal brands, the creator economy, I believe is like the future of how the world is gonna work. These brands are gonna live with us for the rest of our lives, and so guarding your reputation and staying authentic, it's probably a smart move. And off that point, I wanted to know your thoughts on like the future of X and the future of the creator economy. Where do you guys and where do you stand on all that? Yeah, like I'm massively bullish because of all of these new features. Like I believe in Elon, this this like algorithm um, thing, and like the reach is down at the minute. Everyone's like 
worrying and stuff, but I don't think that's going to last for long. I think it'll it'll get back up, especially December, January time, usually uh, traffic like peaks and stuff. I joined in January. I don't know when you joined. But did you join like around that time as well? Around October, but I started to grow a lot yeah. in January. That was like the main Yeah. Growth. So like, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you're starting out now, get your foot in the door before January and then hopefully you'll like jump onto that. But yeah, all of these new features like video calls, uh, payments, stuff like that. I'm thinking like it's going to be like the WeChat of the West. So like WeChat in China, it's just you can like order clothes on there. You can do everything, anything you want. You can just do on there. You can have your CV on there. It'll be like LinkedIn with Amazon, with bloody everything. So yeah, I think I'm really excited. I think X is probably the best bet. It's very risky just because one thing goes wrong, it can set you back quite a lot of time. And it's um, like, especially if you've got a business on there, the reliability of consistent like clients and stuff isn't as good as say like LinkedIn. So I have been venturing over to LinkedIn a bit just to get a bit more safety. But um, no, I'm super bullish on X and all of the video content, long form video stuff, streaming. I used to, I used to be a big like Twitch. I used to watch Twitch all the time during like COVID. I don't know if you did as well. But like if, if you can bring in that type of person to X, um, they're going to bring in a whole load of like new people. And along with like the video content, like podcasters and stuff. Yeah, I don't see how it's not going to be better in a year's time as it is today. That's refreshing to hear because I think the same things, but I have a different lens to view it through. Like I never saw it through the Twitch lens. I never th- saw it through the WeChat lens. That's exciting though. Yeah. Um, and then broader. What, what, what's, like, your, what's your thoughts on it? What are your thoughts? My thoughts come back to Elon as like a guy who sends rockets to Mars and builds electric yeah. cars and like builds tunnels under the earth. Like I think he can figure it out. And I, I watched him on Rogan a little bit and I think his intentions are really pure. Like you'll get a lot of hate on him, like especially from like the far left who was like very, like they were controlling Twitter. And now that he took it over, he fired everybody. He's made it much more to the center, but he made a good point. He was like to the far left, anything to the right of them is like far right. And so, yeah, exactly, exactly. So I think maybe that's (laughs) like been the temporary outrage because on the news and media, like they'll hate him, but the people who are in the arena, like the creators in the arena, I think they see how it's getting better every month. I, I from yeah. where I started, it seems like such a more diverse app than where it is now, or the other way yeah. around. It's much more diverse now than where mm. it was at the start. Yeah, hopefully he like fixes the search function as well because I think that's such a good thing with like TikTok is the algorithm so good that yeah. you just find the stuff that you want to find. Like I'll use the search function on X, and I'm like can't find my own post that I want to find. It's just right. really, really bad. And if they fix that with this new like AI stuff and they've got the show similar posts button under under yeah. post now, which is pretty cool. I like that. Again, it's not perfect, but it's those little tweaks that really help with like the user experience. And I think just keep iterating on that and it'd be fine. I mean, he, he had this idea of this X app when he started PayPal, right? So he's been thinking about it for 20 plus years. So, I mean, he's probably been thinking about it a lot. So, so it's a good bet to take in my opinion. I agree. And he thinks about it on even a much deeper level than just the creator economy. He's thinking about it of like, how are we going to save humanity type thing? I think all of his yeah, endeavors yeah. are done with yeah. that in mind. So I can only imagine the type of stress that dude is under, but he still happens to tweet yeah. memes. So it's, just, it's so interesting. Mate, he's one of the best marketers in the world. He's like, <laughs> he yeah, I'm going to get you to market. He's like, yeah, the digital town square and like free speech and stuff. And like, it's true, but like the way he presents it, it just makes you buy into it. Like his mission statements are just like amazing. Hundred percent, and I want to know your perspective on the broader creator economy because you're at a little bit of a different stage in life. Like you've been in the regular corporate world, you've worked jobs. I'm curious, like, do you see people around your age, like 29, 30, coming into the creator economy? Because I'm seeing more and more of my peers, like 18 to 22, like starting to join. Like here and there, I see people yeah. like, oh, this person's from high school. They just DM me. They're gonna join. Like it's all this crazy stuff. So I'm curious your perspective on the future of it. Yeah. 
I, I see it, but at the same time, I see a lot of people that are just like, I don't really get what it is. Like, a lot of my friends know what I do now, and, like, they don't really bring it up. They're just getting on with their own lives. They're not that fussed about it. I think I've had, like, one that's been like, oh, what you're doing is interesting. But, again, people just don't like putting their face out there and just, I don't know. It's What I will say is, like, it's quite a dangerous thing because you got to have a backbone. Like, if the, like you, got, you have to get used to getting hate because the amount of, like, random comments that can just, like, ruin, like, your day is a lot like if I get I used to get like one bad comment a day saying it would just really put me down and I was like look at all these nice comments over here but then like one bad comment makes me really I don't know that's like how I think about stuff and there's something I'm working on but it's it does like drain you when you're reading all of these comments every single day um but I guess that's something yeah I don't know it's interesting it's interesting I, I think the creative economy is going to be growing for the next year. Probably it's going to double in size eventually in like in the short term. And obviously only the good people are going to survive and like a lot of people are going to give up. But I think if people stick to it, they're going to be decently successful. Even if it's like a side hustle, I encourage people just to get out there and create stuff because the biggest benefit I've had is just from writing. It's like my, my thoughts are much clearer. I'm actually learning about stuff every day. I'm growing as a person. And then like money's just like the byproduct then, right? So I think a lot of people just consume and like as soon as you switch from consumer to creator, like he was saying, you just get up in the morning and you feel more energized. Like I feel like I want to do more stuff so I can write about it. That's another benefit. It's just humans are made to create. And if, like if you're creating something and it doesn't have to be in the creator economy, then that's good. But if you're just working a nine to five, doing the same thing every day, not really flexing that creativity muscle I think that's a really bad thing and you need you should like look at something to create I agree and I just read Rick Rubin's book The Creative Act and he talks about how humans are all mm. inherently creative I think the problem is that gets stripped out of us by school system society job etc but yeah anybody yeah. can create anything and when you are creating and you're in the arena like you're living life almost on the edge. You're fully alive. Like you're pursuing something each day rather than kind of coasting. I like to think about you're either striving or you're coasting. And for a mm. lot of people and for a lot of my life, I've been coasting just to get by, just study enough so you could pass the test, just do well enough in the interview so you could get the internship. But like in the creator economy, you're forced to grow and strive and there's no better forcing function for growth I've seen in the modern world. Like my growth over the past year as a person has just exponentially increased yeah. in comparison to where it was for the first 21 years of my life. Yeah, no, literally, I think I've learned more in the last year than I have in the previous like six or seven, probably is is crazy. Like considering we did, we haven't been on X for, well, you've probably been on it for like a year now, but I mean, it's crazy. It feels like three years, honest to God. Um and like the people you meet as well, like I think that's the biggest part of it is the networking because I've just had opportunities just from knowing the right people and like I'm staying in this villa that's Virgil's who I met on X and I'm just like, holy shit, like what is going on? Like if I yeah. didn't know these people, this wouldn't be happening. And yeah, I think that's a big thing. Networking is huge. I think it's the biggest thing. It's super surreal when you bring a relationship from just somebody you see online to in person. Yeah. It's crazy. Like I would not have left college and gone to Argentina if it weren't for meeting Matt in San Francisco. Cause we had met, we were in the same wow. group chat on Twitter. We both had a thousand followers and we we're like, yo, you want to get on a call? We became friends. And then we end up going to do this together. And I think that speaks to a point you said earlier about how you and Tatsuki like went into it together. I've noticed when yeah. you have those really close friendships, it just propels you forward. Like when I first got into it, I got into it with a high school friend who grew up around the corner from me. He's actually, he's actually, he was in Dakota's cohort, Tyler Rumez. Um, We got yeah. into it at the same time and that just catapulted us forward. And then I became co close friends with Matt, mm. catapulted you forward. So if you're a new creator, like yeah. find that running mate, find that person who you're yeah. going to like, just go with. Yeah. It's like healthy competition, accountability. And yeah, everyone thinks like solopreneurship has to be like a one person thing and i'm like no that's the worst thing you can do make as many friends as you can stick with the ones that you really resonate with 
and yeah it just keeps you like gets you up in the morning makes you want to like build stuff with your friends and like there's no better feeling than building shit with your friends yeah i ha- i can't speak to that quite yet um actually i've recently joined cortex so i'm like st- kind of in that niche with like dan and justin and joey so i'm seeing yeah, yeah how yeah. they are like building together it's really cool but i'm still kind of operating also with the one person business but even if you are a solopreneur one person business the network is the most powerful thing you can cultivate because yeah those people are going to be promoting you on the timeline those people are going to be vouching for you that's how you really create a really really intimate network so no i think no matter yeah. what game you're playing agency game uh, small, lean startup game, whatever, you got to build yeah. that network. Even like referrals, like the amount of referrals inside Growth Army people have had, like I've referred a bunch of like web design work to my students and stuff. And they're just like, oh, like I've made my money back just from referrals. And right. they're just like, right, it's just, it's not even from learning the skill, it's just from being around the right people. And it's, <laughs> yeah. So it's same with Growth Army, um, with Growth Coast in Dakota, it's just like, people were getting clients because of him and stuff like that. And it's just being in the network and you, you pay good money for that stuff. Yeah. That's the one hidden benefit that I didn't realize until I got into it. I thought you're just paying for the information, but you're paying for the network. And like, even with some of my coaching students, like I've referred them to a ghostwriting gig and they've already made more from that gig than they paid me to coach them. And it's like, you're really paying for the network when you pay for coaching, you're paying for that access yeah no for sure and yeah it's massive I had, I had one student who was he was like 19 and he's from new zealand and he like pretty much yeah he paid me for coaching and he was like working in like a warehouse at the time like a really shitty job and like now he's like quit his 95 and it's all just come from like learning from me getting referrals stuff like that learning how to do it and he was just like yeah I just, i'm just gonna go hard on this and like, you know, you, you can sense like with, cause I've had like a hundred students now, I know the ones that are really passionate about it and the ones that are going to do well, like you can sense the ones that are really going to stand out and yeah, it's cool to see. And like most of them are the ones that can network really well, the ones that take risk and yeah, just the ones that try shit and don't really, they're not scared of failure. And I think that's, yeah, they're the main things. You don't have to be the best. You just got to test stuff and iterate really quickly and just adapt how does it feel to impact a kid's life like that like what was your feeling yeah when he told you that well he messaged me and i was like look like i'm fucking i'm not gonna tell you to quit your nine to five like we're gonna get a good base first like i feel like there's a lot more that you can learn and then yeah he was just like right yeah okay and then for the next like month he just landed like six clients he was just messaging me every single day he was like what do i need to do what do i need to do and i was like okay this guy's this guy's got hunger um and i was like okay so worst case this guy loses all of his clients he's learned a load learned like a high income skill um worst case he just gets another job and it's fine so yeah, yeah when he, when he sent me that message saying like i think he first went down to like 20 hours a week from 40 or so and i was like okay that's pretty cool like he's doing he's learning and working at the same time and then he was like yeah full-time just doing what I love and I was like wow that's cool yeah I was like at 19 I was bloody going out partying and drinking and stuff so um but yeah I was a bit jealous but very proud as well that's awesome it's awesome like the impact you can have on people's lives in this creator economy Mm -hmm. because on the surface it might just look like oh people are paying other people to learn how to grow followers and it can look very superficial and super surface level. Mm. But when you literally take somebody from like nine to five to freedom, like that's a crazy transformation. That's insane. Yeah. I think it's every what everyone in a shitty nine to five strives for. I mean, if you're in a nine to five that you love, like I was as well, but it's just the opportunity in the creator economy was too much for me not to leave that marketing job. I wasn't paid very well. So I was like, just makes sense. Um, another thing is like, like people always look up to like big, I don't know, like 100, 200K accounts and stuff. But like a lot of those people don't actually know how to make money. Like some of them don't even have a mailing list, all of this like basic stuff. And yeah, you're just going to be careful with who you, because some of the best accounts are the smaller accounts that just have a lot of knowledge 
that don't really put as much time into like growing their account. So they're the like the diamonds in the rough that if you find one of them and you get talking to them all the time, you can have direct contact to like someone super knowledgeable that will give you free advice. And I think they're the people you want to look for rather than like the big 100K, like, I don't know, platitude accounts and stuff like that. The interesting it's, it's funny. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. Like one of these big, uh, like anonymous accounts called Tatsuki. He's like, you're not, you can't be making 10 K a month with like 7,000 followers. And Tatsuki was like, well, I am. And he was just like, how are you doing it? And I just told him the whole process. And he was like, holy shit. Like I'm barely making any money with this like hundred K account. It's probably just from like retweets and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's crazy how the number on your following doesn't actually resonate with how much you're earning at all. No. And you think it does when you first get in the game, you just instantly hold yeah. those people on higher authority. And even now, like I, I'd say I'd still look up to a lot of the really bigger creators with those big followings, but you have to be able to discern the ones who are actually doing real stuff and real running real businesses from the yeah. platitude accounts. Um, but yeah, so we've been on for a minute here, but I wanted to ask you one last question. I know you hit on a couple of things with, you can tell in your students when they're really ambitious, they don't fear failure, they try things, et cetera. If you were going to give advice to one, to a creator who's just starting off, they don't really know what they're doing. They feel very uncertain. What would you tell them? Like we get it with a lot of students. They don't even know what high income skill to pick. And they're not really sure what they're passionate about. And I say, just pick one skill, run with it. And with time, you'll probably pivot to what you're passionate about or you'll discover or you'll gain that passion after working on it for a while. I feel like passion follows the effort sometimes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just run with it. Focus on networking as soon as you can. Try and get someone you know to join in with you. That helps a lot. but yeah, just run with it. Like write stuff that you're proud of. Don't find the accounts that you like. Take the stuff you like from them. Put them into put it into your writing, and then yeah, just run with it. Do it every single day. Make sure you do it every day because if you're not consistent, you're gonna give up. It's like if you only write when you feel like it, you're gonna get left behind. You have to set these constraints on yourself. Um, because I did it for like six months alongside a nine, like quite a strenuous nine to five. And I was leveraging like evenings, weekends. And like, if you just do that for a few months, it does pay dividends. That's awesome. Yeah, I don't have anything to add. I think that's, if you literally follow that advice, like you can grow the following you need and grow the income you need in six to 12 months. And it might sound unrealistic, but I think we're both living proof that you can do it. You just have to pick something and yeah. go. So anyways, with that, Thank you for waking up early to do this. I learned a ton. <laughs> uh, I had a ton of fun on this conversation. And if you want to plug anything, I know you just released version two, but if you want to plug anything you guys are working on, the Infinite Creator, et cetera. Uh, yeah, so the Infinite Creator, that's an evergreen course now. So you can find that on my X account or in my email list. Apart from that, we're yeah, launching Growth Army again, maybe at the end of the month or the start of next month. So keep an eye out for that. But apart from that, just, yeah, just give me a follow on X at la la lad. And yeah, thanks for having me. It's been awesome. For sure. Yeah. And I'll link all that below. But yeah, man, I appreciate you doing this. We'll have to maybe do it again in a year or two, see where we're at. Yeah, for sure. I'll have to get you on the Growth Army podcast or something. <laughs> I'd love to. That'd be sweet. <laughs>